Welcome to part two, the demo of the power of upsert and external IDs. In this demo, we're going to be exporting data from a production org and showing how we can easily load that data into our sandbox using the upsert operation. Here, I've logged into our source org, what we'll call our production org, and it has a series of accounts, contacts, and opportunities that we want to bring over into our sandbox. Now, as a recap, there's three things that we needed to do to set up this scenario. First, in our sandbox or our target org, we need to set up those external ID fields. Now, I've already gone ahead and set them up. I've called them the account external ID, contact external ID, and opportunity external ID. And these are simply text fields with the external ID option enabled. For any other object that you'd be loading data, you would also create an external ID field. In this other org that we're loading data into, the one I'm calling our sandbox, we can see that when I refresh, it is empty. So our third step, or the second step, is to export the data from the production org, and then our third step will be to import it. I've already gone ahead and exported the data from production. And so I have an accounts, contacts, and opportunity CSV files. And we don't need to make any changes to them because they should have the same schema uh, or fields set up on them as your sandbox would. And in this file, it's important to note that we have the production ID as well as the production ID of any lookup fields. And we're not going to do any cross references, no VLOOKUPs. We will take this data from production directly and load it into the sandbox, all using upsert and external IDs. It's magic, and I love it. Okay, so we have our data. We've created our external IDs. Now it's time to do the data loading. For this demo, I'm going to walk through using the Salesforce data loader. We're going to choose the upsert operation. We're going to load the data in dependency order, starting with accounts. Browse. We'll get our accounts. Next. Now the first question, Salesforce wants to know what field, what external ID field on our object should it use to do the indirect lookup for us? Well, we're going to choose that account external ID field that we had set up. Click next, next, and now it's time to do our field data mapping. Since all the fields from production should match the sandbox, I'm going to go ahead and click on the auto match fields to columns. This is the same that you would do if you were inserting or updating, but with one minor change. The ID field from our production file, that's not going to map into the ID field in the sandbox. No, instead we want to load that value into our custom external ID field. So that's one change to the field mapping. That's all we need. And then we'll go ahead and move to the next screen and finish the data load. Okay, that completed. Come back over here and we'll refresh. And we'll see that our accounts have been loaded and their sandbox IDs are different than the production external ID fields, and that's expected. Okay, let's take a look at how we would load our contacts. We go ahead, click Upsert, choose the contact object, browse, grab our contacts file, and again, we haven't made any changes to it after exporting it from production. Okay, first question, what field on the contact are we going to use to do the matching by? Of course, we pick our external ID field. Okay, next screen. Salesforce knows that the contact object has lookup fields. The one we're interested in is the account lookup field. And as we just pointed out, since this is data directly from production, we do not know what the sandbox Salesforce account IDs are. So we need to tell Salesforce that we have some other value that we can identify those accounts by. Well, since our data is coming from the production system, the external system, we know what the accounts were identified in that system. And 
as we just saw in the previous step, we had mapped that production account ID into this account external ID in, in Salesforce. So this is the part of upsert where sales, where we're delegating to Salesforce to do the VLOOKUP on our behalf. We are out of the business of having to monkey with all those spreadsheets, and Salesforce is going to do this all for us. All we had to do was tell it what field to look at. We'll click Next. We'll do our file to field mapping, the same as you would ever do with Insert or Update, with two subtle changes. That account ID, since that's not technically the sandbox account ID, we're not going to map it to that field. Instead, we're going to map it to the account external ID field. That's where all the magic is. The second subtle change is we don't map the contact ID to the sandbox ID field, but rather into that contact external ID field. Click OK. Next. Finish. Let that load. Come back over into our destination org, refresh our list of contacts. Boom. We've got all our contacts linked to the accounts, and we can see that those IDs are indeed different, and that's to be expected. Let's walk through it one more time using opportunities. Click on our upsert opportunity object, browse to our file. Again, the data that was exported from production, no changes. We'll tell Salesforce what field on the opportunity to use to match to know whether it should insert or update the opportunity records. And then on the next page, we'll tell Salesforce how it can link this data to the appropriate parent lookup fields. So we're going to choose our account external ID field again, do our field mapping, and just like with the contact field mapping, we need to make two subtle changes. One, the account ID from production does not map to the account ID in the sandbox, but rather indirectly into our external ID field. Now, since this is on our data mapping, we're not actually updating the accounts. This upsert only affects the data in the object that we chose. So this is only making changes to the opportunities. However, by doing this mapping step here, we're telling Salesforce how it will do the indirect lookup to determine the correct account ID to use. And then down here on the ID field, we'll map that into our opportunity external ID field. OK. And we'll click Next, Finish, and let that run. Come over to our Opportunities tab, Refresh, boom. There we go. Awesome. Now, you may say, Doug, it's easy to always insert new records into Salesforce. You haven't shown us any magic about how Upsert helps us determine whether the record has already been in there before. And that's right. All I've done is I've chosen Upsert, and you might be thinking it's doing exactly the same as an insert. And in this first scenario, where the t objects were empty, they didn't have any other records, that's exactly what Salesforce chose to do. It didn't find any matches, so it did an insert. So we have 31 opportunities here. Let's say we walk through that load one more time, same way we just did it, and see if the upsert operation is smart enough to know that these records already exist and should update them instead of inserting. So we'll come back, click Upsert. I'm going to upsert the opportunities just like we just did. So we'll click the file, no changes. It doesn't know anything about the sandbox opportunity ID, but it does know that we mapped that production ID from the file into this custom external ID field. And so Salesforce should find a match based on that ID and do updates rather than inserts to prevent creating duplicates. We also tell it to match those accounts by the external ID field. Do our field mapping. Again, I'm going to tell Salesforce the account ID needs to be looked up via that external ID field, but we're out of the business of doing any of the spreadsheet jockeying, which is excellent. OK. Next. Finish. Let that load. 31 successful. Great. Come back to our page. Refresh. Still 31 records. 
I scroll over a bit, we can see all the create dates are the same, and then they were updated just now. That's awesome. Now let's drill into this Edge Communications account, and we can see that we've loaded all the account data, plus its contacts, plus its related opportunities, all in three easy steps. And we didn't have to manipulate that production data at all. It just came over awesome. Now, in the next video, we'll continue our presentation about the power of upsert and external IDs, talking about best practices and how this can fit into a master data management strategy. Thanks for watching.